Hi everyone, welcome back to Learn with Mednuggets. In today's video, we are going to talk about the endocrine hormones GnRH, TRH, PRH, GHRH, CRH, ADH, oxytocin, dopamine, and MSH. I know it's a long list of hormones, so let's start with the first hormone, GnRH. GnRH or gonadotropin releasing hormone is a hormone that releases gonadotropins. Before moving on to gonadotropins, let's talk about tropins. So tropin is a hormone that stimulates the release of other hormones. So if tropin is A, it can stimulate the release of other hormones like B, C, D, E, etc. With that in mind, let's move on to gonadotropin. Gonadotropins like FSH and LH are hormones that stimulate the gonads to release hormones like estrogen and testosterone. So GnRH is a hormone that's produced in the hypothalamus. It acts on the anterior pituitary gland and stimulates it to release the gonadotropins FSH and LH. In females, FSH or follicle-stimulating hormone acts on the ovaries and stimulates the growth and maturation of follicles which produce estrogen. In males, FSH promotes spermatogenesis which is the production of sperm in the testis. This leads to the production of inhibin which inhibits FSH through negative feedback. LH or luteinizing hormone, on the other hand, in females, stimulates ovulation. After ovulation, LH stimulates the corpus luteum to produce progesterone, which is crucial for maintaining the uterine lining for a potential pregnancy. In males, LH stimulates Leydig cells in the testes to produce testosterone, a hormone essential for sperm production, like FSH, and the development of male secondary sexual characteristics. Now let's move on to TRH. TRH, also known as thyrotropin-releasing hormone, is a hormone that releases thyrotropins. What are thyrotropins? Thyrotropins are hormones like TSH that stimulate the thyroid gland to produce hormones like T3 and T4. So TRH is a hormone that is synthesized in the hypothalamus. It stimulates the anterior pituitary gland to release thyroid-stimulating hormone. TSH stimulates the thyroid gland to produce thyroid hormones like T3 and T4. So what is the function of thyroid hormones? Thyroid hormones basically increase everything. They increase the basal metabolic rate, they increase bone growth, they increase the blood sugar level, and also they can increase fat breakdown. Let's move on to the third hormone, PRH, also known as prolactin-releasing hormone. PRH is a hormone that releases prolactin. What is prolactin? Pro is for or in favor of. Lactin, lac means milk. So prolactin can be interpreted as for milk, reflecting its primary role in promoting milk production in breastfeeding women. PRH is synthesized in the hypothalamus where it goes and stimulates the anterior pituitary gland to release prolactin. Prolactin acts on the mammary glands and stimulates milk production. At the same time, prolactin inhibits GnRH because you don't want to have another baby when you've just pushed one out. We call this natural contraception. Excess prolactin can cause osteoporosis as gonadotropins like estrogen protect bones. So inhibiting estrogen can lead to the breakdown of bones. Number 4. GHRH GHRH stands for Growth Hormone Releasing Hormone. It's a hormone that releases growth hormone. So what's the function of growth hormone? Obviously, it's a hormone that causes growth. It promotes growth of tissues, particularly in muscles and bones, by stimulating the production of insulin-like growth factor 1, IGF-1. 
So GHRH is produced in the hypothalamus where it stimulates the anterior pituitary gland to produce growth hormone. Growth hormone goes and acts on adipose tissue where it causes lipolysis. The breakdown of fat can release energy and increase its availability for growth processes like cell division and tissue repair, which are essential during periods of growth such as childhood and adolescence. Growth hormone also acts on the liver and stimulates the production of insulin-like growth factor 1. Insulin-like growth factor 1 promotes the growth of bone and muscle. Now let's move on to CRH, also known as corticotropin-releasing hormone. Corticotropin-releasing hormone is a hormone that releases corticotropins. So what are corticotropins? Corticotropins are hormones like adrenocorticotropic hormone that stimulates the cortex of the adrenal gland to produce cortisol. So CRH is produced in the hypothalamus and it stimulates the anterior pituitary gland to secrete ACTH. ACTH goes and acts on the adrenal cortex and stimulates it to release cortisol. Cortisol is our body's stress hormone. It increases our blood glucose and blood pressure to cope with stress. So why do we need a high glucose level and a high blood pressure to deal with stress? As increased glucose levels can support immediate energy needs which can be critical for physical actions like running or heightened mental alertness in response to stressors. Similarly, a high blood pressure prepares your body for that fight-or-flight response. High blood pressure means high blood flow, and that means more oxygen and nutrients are delivered to vital organs and muscles, allowing for quick physical responses. With that said, now let's move on to ADH and oxytocin. These hormones are pretty special because unlike other hormones, these two are synthesized in the hypothalamus, transported to the posterior pituitary gland and released from the posterior pituitary gland. So the bright side is you don't have to remember two extra hormones produced by the pituitary like before. So what is ADH and what does it do in our body? ADH stands for antidiuretic hormone. What is diuresis? Diuresis means urination. When you urinate, you lose fluid volume. So antidiuresis means the opposite of diuresis. Anti means opposite, like clockwise and anticlockwise. So antidiuretic hormone will try to retain fluid by stopping diuresis. So how does it do that? It acts on the portions of the kidney tubules that absorb water like the collecting duct and distal convoluted tubule and increases water reabsorption. Its primary action though is on the distal convoluted tubule. Oxytocin Oxytocin stimulates uterine contractions during labour and also plays a part in the milk letdown reflex. That is when a baby begins suckling, Milk is ejected within about 30 seconds to 1 minute. Now let's move on to MSH and dopamine. MSH, also known as melanocyte-stimulating hormone, is produced and released by the anterior pituitary gland. It stimulates melanocytes to produce melanin, which gives the dark skin color and protects against UV. A very important point to remember is that MSH and ACTH share the same precursor molecule. Therefore, in Cushing's syndrome, where there's an excessive production of ACTH, hyperpigmentation can also be seen as a result of high levels of MSH in the blood. Now let's move on to dopamine. Dopamine is our body's feel-good hormone that contributes to feelings of pleasure and reward. It's vital for mood, motivation, movement, cognition, hormone balance, and sleep regulation. A very important point to remember is that dopamine inhibits prolactin, which makes sense if you really think about it. Now let's move on to the hormones that regulate our body's calcium levels, that is PTH and calcitonin. 
Just kidding, guys. I'll make a separate video on that. Thanks for tuning in today. Have a great day.